flow. In this video, I'll show you how to build Docker images for your Clojure services. So we will start with a, a simple example when we'll have uh, our uh, Clojure base image and we'll use lane uh, to run our service inside of this image. But after that, we'll extend it uh, to, to use the multi-stage Docker build. So we will split the build stage and the runtime stage. And in the runtime stage, we'll just use uh, Java image. So we don't have any Leningen installations inside our production image. So yeah, let's quickly uh, look what we have. Um, so I created uh, a really simple project uh, which basically has two dependencies. One is uh, Clojure, obviously, and the second one is the Ring JT adapter. And uh, the code itself even simpler than that. So we have uh, our main function and we're just starting the JT inside on the port 3000 and uh, we have a a really simple handler basically that returns all the time 200 with a hello world uh, message. So uh, let's jump to the terminal and uh, I'll quickly show you the versions I'm using. So for the landing game, I'm basically using the, the most recent one and I'm on the Java 17 OpenGDK. Uh, if you're interested uh, how I manage my versions, I actually have a video on the channel about ASDF version manager uh, and I can do things like uh, ASDF global lane and then I can uh, list uh, all uh, possible versions so I can easily switch between them. So this tool is really powerful and go check the video. But uh, that's not a topic for today. Uh, so we have, uh, as I showed you, the lining again, uh, version uh, 2.10 uh, and uh, let's just run uh, first of all uh, let's double check that we don't have anything running on uh, our local host now so as you can see no response from uh, from this port and if we start uh, our project with lay and run uh, it will it will start the server and now in the the other terminal uh, we can double check that it's working hello world cool now if we stop that uh, we can double check that it's not working again and after that we basically can start creating our docker docker image so uh, i just created this docker file completely empty in the root of the uh, of the project uh, of the project we are working on and let's start with uh, the base image so it will be closure um, lane dash two ten zero. Uh, this is uh, the version that we I have locally. Uh, so the command to build uh, the Docker is something like that. So we will uh, name it um, lane at the end, and the context is the current directory. So let's double check that it works. So yeah. Uh, we just uh, uploaded the uh, downloaded this base image basically so after that what we want to do is a good thing is to start with creating a working directory uh, it will be it could be anything but uh, we usually name it something like opt service and the next step will be to copy our project clj file to uh, this uh, location uh, so after we've done that uh, the idea is to run uh, lane depths, and I'll uh, describe why we do that in a second. Uh, for now, let's just try building it once again. And uh, yeah, uh, th this is done. And just uh, double check if, uh, if we add some dependencies, uh, some changes in our project CLJ file. So let's say something uh, changed. Uh, and we run the build again, we will see that it actually uh, downloads uh, the dependencies. Uh, but if we run it again, uh, we're basically using the cached version of the layer. And uh, that's a hack that allows us to uh, cache the dependencies. If nothing is changed in the project CLJ file, this will be from the cached layer on Docker. So we're saving the step to download all dependencies each time. So 
the next part is uh, to run copy again, but now we actually adding all files from uh, our repo to this opt uh, slash service. And at the end, we just define the command to run. It will be lane uh, run. And our Docker image is ready. So let's build it once again. Uh, let's double check that we don't have anything running on our local machine. And after that, let's just uh, run the Docker. Uh, so Docker run. Uh, we're using this lane image for now, and I'm mapping the ports so it's available on the on my local host. So yeah, let's check that the Docker image is actually running. Cool. And now we can check that it's uh, available. Yeah, as you can see. So uh, let's stop uh, the container. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to show you uh, why uh, this trick uh, is useful to split uh, copying the project CLJ and then running lane dependencies and then copying the rest uh, is because if we want to change something in our uh, source uh, file, so for example, we want to print uh, our request, right? Now, if we run uh, Docker, Docker build, uh, it will use the cached layer for the dependencies because nothing changed in the in this file. But if we do something, some changes in the project CLJ, now we'll have to download dependencies again. So yeah, just uh, use this trick to uh, speed up the the builds, especially if you run uh, a lot of builds. It's really useful to have uh, dependencies cached in a separate Docker layer layer. Uh, then the small improvements you can do from here is actually to run lane uh, trampoline uh, run, which uh, will basically skip one JVM that uh, lane creates. Uh, I don't want to dive uh, to dive into too much details about this. If you're interested about this trampoline command, just go to the official docs and write, uh, read about that uh, there. But basically, uh, this will be exactly the same as uh, lane run in terms of the, the result, but under the hood, it will be slightly different. It will be a single JVM started. So yeah, let's keep that for now. Uh, Cool. So we basically finished the most uh, basic uh, Docker uh, image and uh, Docker build uh, process for the closure service. So it's totally fine to use something like that. Uh, usually in production, uh, people just trying to remove this uh, lane again uh, dependency from the final uh, Docker image. And I'll show you how to do that with uh, a multi-stage Docker build. So to switch to a uh, multi-stage Docker build, uh, it's actually quite simple. So first of all, we can name our stages with this as um, operator, and the name could be anything. Uh, I'll call it just uh, the builder. And after that, now we have uh, the second layer. So you can just create it with like a from, uh, and we will use open, open JDK, uh, 17 and we will name it as runtime um, so after that we will do copy and we can copy from our builder layer and we'll say from builder and then we have to specify path where we'll have our uber jar so uh, let's start with opt uh, service but after that, uh, the easiest way to understand how lane is creating UberJars is just to run the lane um, UberJar command uh, in the terminal. So let's uh, see what's the, the output. So we, we are basically interested in this file. And you see it's, it's putting it to the uh, target slash UberJar. So it will be the same when we will run it in our Docker. So... Uh, we, we're getting that, uh, and now we need to specify where we want to copy it. And let's say we want it to be inside service, uh, and we'll keep the same name uh, without Ubitra. 
So it will be a uh, opt uh, service and this is our uh, jar um, name. Cool. And now at the end, uh, we want to run uh, the command, uh, but now it will be just Java uh, minus jar and then the path to the, to the jar file. Uh, the last thing to change is actually instead of this um, command here, we want actually trigger the lane uber jar here, and we can remove this command. Um, looks good. So we don't have anything running. We can check that we don't have uh, anything running on our local host as well. Uh, let's build uh, the, the new multi-stage uh, docker. Let's name it Java and wait a bit while it's building. Cool, it's done. And now we can run it again, but now we want uh, Java. It started and then just double check that it's running again. So um, we can call docker images java and yeah that's our final final image here uh, but yeah basically you have this runtime that don't have a uh, landing anymore and uh, literally it doesn't have any knowledge about closure because uh, you're basically just running a jar file as it would be in a normal java uh, program um, so yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to share today. Uh, if you liked uh, the video, you like the content like that, you want to learn more about closure, uh, functional programming, uh, please subscribe to the channel and also don't mind uh, smash the like button. That uh, helps a lot. Um, have a lovely day and see you in the next video.